space right there, just because of the way that we're set up. And so what we often will do is we'll pass to this guy right here, he cuts through, and now we dodge into that open space. So because we're trying to dodge, in order to set up the dodge, we're setting it up in, the, in, the, in a certain formation, this guy's going to move through, and then he's going to come through on the dodge like that. And then we have other things that will happen, which I can show you later. But, but that's what we're trying to do in any type of a set is we're trying to use the strengths of our team, or, or at least the identity of what we're trying to accomplish, and then we use those sets to do that. The 2-2-2 and the 2-3-1 are the most common and provide probably the most versatile options for the type of offense that you want to be. If I was telling anybody, to, if they're starting the team and you ask me what set would I start in, I'd start in the 2-2-2. So I'd start in this set right here. It gives us some movement options in the crease. It gives you tons of space for dodging, both from X and from here, across. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of space there because we put two guys in the crease. And so if I were to tell anybody or recommend to anybody, hey, if we're just starting and I need to teach my kids where to go, that's how I'd start. The Clyde 2 2 2. So, okay? Do they usually stay? Do the guys on the crease, do they usually stay low the whole time and run their offense? They do not. And they go back, back and forth between high Yeah, and so and we'll go through some of this in just a minute, but yeah, they do not stay there. Now, they're, it, when they're younger, for instance, when they're younger, what I would teach them to do is just, I would keep them there a little bit more. I would teach them how to pick off each other, right? Or um, split off of each other. But I'd teach them to kind of work together a little bit. And working together, they can then occupy their defenders a little bit more. We, one of our rules, and I'll go through our rules in just a minute. One of our rules is every time we have a dodge, okay, so again, if you remember, in our offense, we're going to initiate from the dodge. So if this guy here decides, hey, I'm going to dodge with the ball, one of our very first rules is we vacate the crease. So these two players right here, their job is to get out of the crease. Okay? Anybody tell me why? Don't want to go on Strong or defense. Okay, right there. Okay? We are going to put pressure on the defense. So the defense tends to be here and here. And then they're going to go and they're going to help what we call a slide. They're going to go help this player right here. If I take this guy and back him out here, and I take this guy and back him out here, or move him up here, wherever, I vacate that area. Now we put pressure on the defender to have to make a choice. Am I going to go and am I going to slide and help? Or am I going to stay in with my guy and we've made them make a choice? It also creates space there because we've now opened up that space. So that's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but that's what we do. So every time this guy dodges, there's five other players who have options on where they can move. We'll go through that in just a second. So what we've done, what we do in our offense is we break it down into when the dodge comes, what do these five players do? And most people, when they teach it, they're going to say, okay. All right, so this guy dodges. This guy goes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here, he goes here, and he goes here. That's not a bad thing, but if that's all they do, when this doesn't work, what do they do next? And then what do they do next? And what do they do next? And what do they do next? Inevitably, this doesn't work. Probably 80% of the time. So what we try to do is teach them some principles that will allow them to always know what to do. Next. Always know what to do next. Always know what to do next. And we try to make it really simple. So as we go through this, hopefully you'll kind of understand what we're trying to do. But some people that are like, hey, we're going to run this and they'll call this, uh, you know, double triangles or whatever. And hey, we're running double T. Here we go. And this is their play. And that's what they do. And they look. And when it doesn't happen, okay, let's reset. Let's reset. And everybody stops. And then they go back to their spots and they do it again. Right? What we want to do is we want to be able to say, hey, when this doesn't work, what are our options? What's the next thing? And we'll, we'll go through that. I've tried to put it in a way that hopefully is a sequential, easy way for you to teach how to do that. So, good question. <coughs> Other questions? Yeah. So if you're playing against the zone defense, and I know we always say teaching play band at fifth, sixth grade, and I'll be a 
same principles apply to this or? Yeah, I mean, they do. And the thing with the zone, so I'll give you my, my soapbox for just really quick. Please don't ever play zone defense in youth lacrosse. All you're doing is doing a disservice to your players. Now, with that being said, you'll win more games. You'll win more games because you're forcing the shots to go from a further distance for the most part because you're just packing it in, okay? But you're doing your kids a disservice because they don't learn how to play defense, right? So there's my soapbox on that. The principles are the same a little bit. Here's the difference. Actually, we'll come back to zone at the end. Don't worry, okay. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to zone at the end because there, you can use a lot of the principles that we're going to teach in a zone offense as well. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's the first principle: is a player with the ball has three options. He's either a dodger, I'm sorry, a shooter, dodger, or passer in that order. So we always tell kids: your first, when you get the ball, your first option is always to shoot. Always to shoot. We want our kids to be shooters. The game is about shooting. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean they always should be shooting. It doesn't mean that they're in a good position to take a shot. It just means when I'm in that position and I've got an open shot, take it. So it causes them to have to make a decision when they receive the ball. Am I in a position to shoot, yes or no? And that decision has to be made quickly, almost instantaneously. As a matter of fact, our guys better know before they get the ball if they're shooting or not. They better know, hey, I'm going to be a shooter or not before I get the ball. So, no, number one is I'm a shooter. Now, second, if I'm not a shooter, can I be a dodger? Am I in a good position right now to dodge to the goal to score? Okay? And if I am, great, be a dodger. If I'm not, really the choice is very, very simple. You're just passing it to the next guy. Passing it to the next guy. And so if you can get them to just do these three things, oh my gosh, your team would be awesome. Because what do they normally do when they get the ball? Youth lacrosse. Yes. They pass it around, or they catch it and they go. Right? It's like, okay, I have the ball now. I don't really know what to do, and so maybe if I row, kind of run around a little bit, I'll figure it out. Right? Or maybe somebody will come open, or something will happen. But they really just don't know. So if you can kind of get that idea of shoot it, dodge, and if you're not one of those, just pass it to the next guy. Okay? And that's okay. Eventually, you do have to have, in our offense, somebody has to dodge. Somebody has to dodge or else it doesn't work. Okay? So that's kind of the key principle there. Be a threat, get defended. There's a handful of things that just pop into my head and say, if I gave them the green light to just shoot, it seems like that would be it. There we go. No one else would the ball. Yeah. Like, so, so, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, I guess, but they would just be like, oh, right. yeah, that's me. I'm so it comes down to decision making, right? Which is, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, and that's, that's, a, that's a skill that they have to learn that just because I have the ball every time doesn't mean I should shoot it every time, right? And that's hard for them to learn. Um, the best way for them to learn that, honestly, is if you have film with them. Because you can be like, look, Johnny over here is wide open. Why are you just passing the ball? You know, oh, because you said I could shoot. Yeah, but you have two guys on it right here. Like, why would you try to shoot? They don't, that, that's the best way for them to learn, and I know we don't have film and youth lacrosse, so as much as you can point that out to them, you know, the better. But yeah, it's, that is a, there's a, there's a flip side to that that can, that can turn on you a little bit. So you, you do have to, as a coach, if guys are taking bad shots, tell them and tell them why. You know, hey, it's not because I don't like you, I'm just telling you, this is why that was not a great shot, and this is why. The worst thing is when they take a bad shot at it, it goes in. That's the worst thing, right? Because now all, that, all we do is reinforce the fact that I can shoot whenever I want. Right? So, yeah. But there are, on the other side of the coin, I think there are more players who aren't willing to shoot, yeah. and, they, and they should, and so that's the argument. That's where we're going. Who would be open? Or, you know. Yeah, and so if we can get them those things. So, anyway, so with the ball, three principles. That's what you need to learn. Without the ball, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, with the ball, continue. Okay, so with the ball, now I shoot. Okay, and that's great. I'm a shooter. Boom. Now, if I'm a dodger, okay, a couple things might happen. So I'm going to dodge to the goal, and I beat my guy. Somebody on the other team is probably going to come to me to help my defender. 
Unless they, you know, if they don't grade, I'm going to run in, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to score, I'm going to grade. Somebody's going to come, and we call that a slide to me, to come and help me. So we have now pointed out three options now if the slider comes to you, what you need to do. So here's this guy right here, and he's dodging down here. Here's the slider. He's coming from the crease. He's going to slide. So we teach our guys your first option, if you're not a shooter, is pass the ball to the guy where the slider is coming from. So this guy right here. Why? Because his defender just left him. He's going to be probably the one that's initially open. Okay? So we teach our guys this is your first look right there. I'm coming. I see the slider. My look is right in there to where the slide came from. Okay? Second look. We have these two guys on the crease. This guy's vacating the crease. He's coming down here. Second look is across right here. We call that the skip. Okay? The skip could be down here as well, but any, anything on the skip is what we call across the Z line. The Z line is a term that we use, and I know other people use it, but we use it. It is an imaginary line that divides the field in half. You can call it whatever you want, we call it the Z line. And so a lot of our offense is get the ball across the Z line. Okay, so the skip pass is any pass that's going to get the ball across the Z line. And again, we're doing that because this defender now, who's defending this guy, now has to defend both of these two. So he's probably right there. He moves from here to here as this guy moves out, so he may have space to shoot. So that's the second look. The first look is to the slider. Second look is skip across the Z line. Across the Z line. The third and fourth looks are what we call the simple looks. That might be this pass right here, just to an adjacent player, or I might roll back and make this pass to the adjacent player. Okay? Now the next piece of this is the adjacent player needs to get the ball across the Z line. So if it's this guy, he needs to get the ball over here as quickly as possible. This guy needs to get the ball over here as quickly as possible. Okay? So we call those the four S's. When I have the ball, I'm dodging, I'm a shooter, I'm looking for the slide, I'm looking for the skip, I'm looking for the symbol. So we call it four S's, and so it gives them a picture in their mind, option one, two, three, four. That's where the ball should go. One, two, three, or four. And so just like a quarterback has to make his progression in reads, these players learn how to make that progression. Now, you can start by taking this in chunks and say, you know what, we're going to practice just the slider. That's all we're going to do. Forget the skip. They can't even throw a 20-yard pass, so you know, let's just focus on the slider. And you're going to say, every time you see a slider, get the ball to that guy. Get the ball to that guy. Get the ball to that guy. We're going to, we're going to work on the simple pass, which is, I'm going to go down here, pass to the next guy. I'm going to go down here, roll back, pass to the next guy. So you can just take pieces of this and rep it and drill it and rep it and drill it so that they know, hey, this is what this looks like. Slide it, slide it, slide it. Oh, skip, boom, skip, boom, it was over there. So you just rep it, you have just that one piece, and then all of a sudden you've repped all the pieces, they dodge and they're like, hey, that skip's open. Boom, I'm gonna hit him. Or, wait a minute, slider's covered, skip's covered, I'm just gonna go to the next guy and get it to him. If there's a problem with lacrosse and youth lacrosse, particularly in our kind of our area where you know we're newer to lacrosse, it's that we don't make that decision fast enough. So we maybe we have a skill set and we can actually make the pass. That's problem number one is having that skill. Two is knowing the options, which okay, here are your options, one, two, three, and four. And then it's deciding where to go and making that decision. How many times do you see a kid and you're as a coach you're like, oh, pass it, pass it, pass it, and they don't pass it, right? Why don't they pass it? I, I don't know sometimes. I'm like, I ask my college players, why do you pass it? Like, oh, well, you know, maybe because they're not confident in their skill, maybe because they see the guys offended, maybe they don't know, but the sooner they can make a decision, the better. The ball needs to move fast. We hold it too long. We get defended too easily move the ball faster and then this stuff 
actually looks good. So, questions on this? So again, this is just a way to approach giving kids, here's your options. And they get to make, and, and you frame it, hey, you get to choose every, every single time you have the ball. You get to choose. I'm not telling you what to do. Here's your choices. And maybe that excites them to say, hey, yeah, coach is giving me some freedom here. We get to do our thing. But to teach it, you can teach it in, in pieces. Okay? All right. Um, okay, principles without the ball. So we, we try to make this super, super, super easy as we teach kids. There's one key element, and, and I can, you can go to any of my practices, and if I talk to my kids, I'm saying, when you don't have the ball, what's your key responsibility? And they'll say, find space, find space, find space. That's all they have to know. Because if they will find space when they don't have the ball, at some point they're going to be right. I tell them, you're never going to be wrong if you're trying to find space. Because if they're trying to find space, they're moving in some way, and we teach them these are the ways that you move. Okay? So finding space is we're just moving. We're moving without the ball. And here's how we're going to move. Okay? And the idea of finding space is we want you to become a shooter, dodger, or a passer. Okay? We want you to get into that place where then you can be one of those three things. So to move to space, you can do it one of five ways. I can cut. So, if I'm a player right here, and this player has the ball and he's dodging down this way, I can just cut through the crease. Whoop, just like that. Okay? Now, I am trying to find space, but what did I do in the meantime? Created space, right? So I've created space now for this player to move into by me moving out a little. And as long as I'm trying to find space, whether it be here or here or here, whatever, I'm trying to find that space and I just keep moving, at least I have created space for my teammate. This is the piece that kids really don't get. They don't get the idea that by me moving, I just create an opportunity for you by creating this space. They're like, well, if I'm moving, I should get the ball. No, not always. As a matter of fact, most times you don't. There's six players on the field, only one guy has the ball. So five out of six times, you're not going to have the ball. You know? But they think, oh, if I'm moving, then I should automatically get the ball. No. You move to create opportunities for your teammates and yourself. Because by moving now and you go to space, your teammate can find you. Okay? So that's number one. Cut through the crease, through the middle, wherever it is. Okay? Two is an exchange. So we may have a midi here and a midi here. The ball's there. This midi goes here. This midi goes there. All they did was exchange places. Change places. It's very simple, but again, it occupies defenders. It makes them have to think. It takes their focus off the ball. Just a simple exchange creates a lot of havoc for defense. We call them shallow cuts. X chain, you know, X cuts, there's a lot of different names for them, but in essence it's just an exchange of two players. So in the two-man game that we talked about, you get a lot of this. So these two players are exchanging, he's got the ball, and he's got the ball. These two players are exchanging off the ball because they're in pairs. And so there's a lot of exchanges. But it's just, hey, I can just switch places with another player. They understand that. Kids understand that. Picks. And okay, there's two types of picks. There's hard picks, and there's slip picks. So a hard pick is when this player has the ball, this player comes down, he sets a hard pick, and this player comes over the top, like that. He comes up, boom, stands still, that guy runs into him, he goes around, we've set a really good hard pick. Okay? We try not to do a lot of those, because nine times out of ten, you get this or some sort of blocking, moving picks all the time, okay, all the time. So we do more of a slip pick. As this player comes down, he comes down in this area, but he never really stops. And this guy comes around like this, we get the same effect <coughs> because the defense 
thinks we're going to pick 